Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify. Uh, for the record, I'm Representative David Corson from Northwood, and I'm here to testify in support of HB 109, and I've distributed this testimony and two additional brief handouts uh, for your review, and that explains the information that's persuaded me to support the bill. A majority of Americans favor legislation like HB 109, but that's not a reason in and of itself to pass a bill like this just because of majority preference. There have to be good reasons. And there are two good reasons, and I think they're significant. The most reliable evidence from the last 20 years of research indicates that background checks can reduce suicides by gunshot wound. That research also indicates that background checks can reduce violent crime involving firearms. Researchers at the RAND Corporation spent two years gathering and evaluating all the available research about gun regulations and their impact on gun safety. They established very stringent requirements to assess the quality of the research. They found that very few met their criteria. And that's not surprising, because solid research is hard to come by, and the Dickey Amendment explanation describes why. And I think that's very relevant to every question that somebody throws up as to what are the numbers, what are the facts, how can you explain this? Well, in a real way, the way we might obviously be able to if we'd had 20 years of research, none of us can explain anything as accurately and justify it as we would have liked had we had that research. But we do have to deal with what we have. And their results published in Gun Policy in America, which the link is in my testimony, they rated studies that they did include, and the two most reliable categories of evidence were those described as strongly report supportive and moderately supportive. And they found moderately supportive evidence that background check policies reduce suicide and violent gun-related crimes. And by moderate, they mean that it meant at least their stringent criteria in two significant studies that they were able to identify, despite the prohibitions against federal research. The people are way ahead of the political process in this when it comes to gun ownership policies like HB 109. And such a policy would protect our citizens by reducing the risk of suicide and exposure to violent crime. Also, in terms of the question as to what's the frequency of people purchasing firearms without background checks, you can refer to the link there from the Annals of Internal Medicine, which is a study from 2017, which, by the way, is the first study that's been done in a major way since 2000, since 1994, because of the prohibition against research. And that evidence does show that 20% of people are continuing to buy guns without a background check. And it also asks those people if they bought a guns in five years uh, prior to that, so it would have been 2010 or earlier. And of the people who had bought guns, 57% of them said they bought them without a background check. And since the time that that was done, there have been 19 states that have passed background check laws. And that's one of the explanations for why those numbers are decreasing, and there is evidence for that. Thank you very much. Crop TV.